the gorilla in the room is the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the drug companies spend something like $80 billion a year on marketing and lobbying. They spend much, much less on research, and most of the research they do is really a tool of marketing, not developing new products. The pharmaceutical industry doesn't favor long-term studies for monetary reasons and for outcome reasons. They, they don't want to show that their drug actually doesn't do well. So here's how it's done and how it was done. They funneled all sorts of money to what are called thought leaders. Academic psychiatrists at prestigious American universities, Harvard, Stanford, Johns Hopkins, and those academic psychiatrists began working for the drug companies as consultants, serving as their speakers, advisors, etc. You would start with a clinical study of the drug, but who's designing the study? The pharmaceutical companies, they know how to design it to make their drug look good. That's step one. Who then analyzes the data? Well, their own people do it. It's done by the drug companies themselves. Third, then, who writes the papers? It's actually ghostwriters hired by the drug companies to write up the study. They now present this study to the people that they want to be the big names of the study. And then those thought leaders basically sign off on the ghostwritten papers, and they become, quote, the authors of the published paper. The former editors of the medical journals like JAMA and New England Journal of Medicine and BMJ, British Medical Journal, they've all said that like basically we became vehicles for story laundering. It was a corrupted creation of an evidence base. Now I'm a practicing doctor in some town. What am I gonna believe? Well, I'm gonna believe, you know, Mr. Dr. Bigwig at Harvard University that this is the best science. So my obligation is to use the very drug they say is so great.